guess uh, might as well run you through what I've been doing and how I came about being here this morning. Um, I've been uh, riding my bike a lot recently, keeping fit. The life of a car pangler isn't really conducive to staying fit and well. Um, I spent the last 30 years sat on a bed chair, smoking cigarettes and being genuinely unhealthy. Um, I'm 44 now. And, uh, it's about time I got myself back into prime shape. So I've been riding a lot recently, you know, out on my bike. I'm lucky in where I live, in the heart of the Colne Valley, that I don't actually have to go on any roads to ride my bike. I just come out of my house, down the lane, along the canal, around all the lakes, and that. it's a lovely ride. Listen to music. Before you know it, you've been out for two or three hours. Anyway, long story short, I came through here two or three days ago. Uh, stopped to have a look, as I always do. I fished here for a long time, since I was a little boy. I used to fish here for roach when I was a kid, and uh, in later years for the carp. There was never many carp here. The stretch as a whole didn't really ever hold many carp. And as a kid, I never really had any memories of seeing carp here, but in the intervening years, a few have found their way in, and it's a nice spot for them here. They live here, this is their house. Um, we've got the outflow of a really, really big sewage works behind us. Um, I tend to fish here a lot in the winter where the water's very cold because it steams like a bath here. It's like, it is a hot water spot for want of a better description. Uh, but anyway, it's midsummer now. I rode through, the cabbages are really high. Um, in the last few years, there's been a bit of a pollution in this stretch and they died off almost to nothing. Um, and the fishing dropped away as a result. Um, the bottom was yellow, almost orange of algae, like almost polluted. Um, but over the last two years, it's come back. The cabbages are now as thick as they've ever been. You know, they're five or six foot deep and they go out. It's a huge amount of cover for a few carp. And the carp are back, you know, there's not many of them here. There's never usually many here. Half a dozen is a, is, a, is a good amount of fish to be at this spot. But anyway, I rode past the other day, stopped. I was out of breath, had a drink, and saw three carp here. Uh, one of which I was pretty sure I'd caught in the winter, a 20 pound mirror, long one. Um, a long common that's lived on this bit for many years. It's got a funny color to it, but it's a little bull nosed, real character. Um, and another one that I just caught the back end of, I saw his tail as he, as he disappeared into the cabbages. And I thought, well, it's a nice little, it's a, you know, there's a few here, even though I thought there probably was only three carp, I was hoping there might have been a couple more. I thought it's a nice little bit, we'll drop in, we'll get a little bit of footage. So I spoke to the boys at Witchwood, who were really keen to come out and shoot this. So I, I came back the following day, drove down to the nearest part I can park to, which is quite a walk, it's a 15 minute walk. And I bought me a jar of hemp, CC more hemp, just normal hemp in the jar, and literally a small bag of boilies, like a couple of big handfuls. The water's very clear here where it comes out of the, out of the sewage works. It's got an almost brown tint to it, but it's very clear in comparison to the canal water itself. So you can see everything, and the bottom's like shingle before it hits the cabbages. You've only got a very short window behind me. My rods are behind me here, fishing over a wall, and there's stanchions going down to the bottom and you've got a clear run of three or four feet before this huge wall of cabbages start. Anyway, I put the hemp down. I actually come up behind me up the channel and put the hemp in because of the flow. It sort of settles down on the clean ground and just goes under the front of the cabbages where I was hoping they'd all be sat. And a few handfuls of boilies and left them to it. I thought, there's a good chance, you know, we'll come back. Anyway, last night we had a mega deluge of rain. It, it rained all night at nine or 10 o'clock last night. I was thinking that maybe I'd come down and get ready so I didn't have to get up at four this morning. But I went out to the car, put the kit in the car and it was absolute stair rods. And I thought, do you know what? I'll go in the morning. So I set the rods up anyway. I'll show you the rod, how, how I'm fishing here, which is very simple. It needs to be uh, strength and simplicity, purely because of the situation. The cabbages here are very thick really thick, big thick roots on them. And plus you've got the stanchions, which are concrete, are covered in mussels now, as I found out a little while ago. So anyway, I got here this morning, it was still dark. Crept up the canal, all was quiet. Still raining a bit, but nice, you know, really carpy conditions, very muggy this morning. And even in the half light, as I walked across the little bridge here, I could see two or three shapes at the back of the cabbages, really clearly, they look really pale. But anyway, there was a few carp here, so I was confident. Even though they were at the back end of the cabbages, I got set up quickly, out the way here, we were using my torch, put some boilies on, walk them down, literally lower them in really tight to the wall, just behind the pillar that breaks the flow a little bit. Crack, it's just like this, really, really hard. Crumbled a few boilies, no more than six or seven, 
dropped them down right on top of the pillar where there's a little bit of a back eddy and I hoped they wouldn't all be washed away under the cabbages and I sat back and then Rich and Andy arrived. While it was still half light to be fair, they made the effort, got down from Milton Keynes, everything was looking good and I said to them, look, you know, invariably when it happens here, it happens very quickly. Um, I fish here a lot in the winter and normally I start in dark and I'm back in the calf by nine o'clock having some breakfast. You know, it's a, it's a lovely bit of fishing. None of this sitting behind buzzers for days on end. You just don't need to. It's all about finding the fish. I'd found some fish on my bike ride by chance, fed them a little bit and dropped in. Well, anyway, I guess no more than 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes after we'd sort of sat here and had a chat. The nearest rod to me here, which isn't my banker rod, the banker rod is the rod a bit further on where the flow's a bit stronger and uh, it's just a better spot. They seem to like it there more. Anyway, it was the near side rod, absolutely tore off, nearly pull, pulled it in. We were a bit lucky really. Anyway, the fish, rather than running into the cabbages, fortunately ran back up the channels behind me. And uh, you know, you sort of playing it with the rod bent over underneath you. And with a 12 foot rod it's quite awkward, I'd, I'd, I'd actually planned to bring my 9 footers so I only had one small section on the net and you'll see from the video I struggled to get it in the net, I had to let more line off to actually get it in in the end. But I had a really good fight with this fish, it ran back round the pillars and I sort of eased it back out and uh, it exploded on the surface and it looked a nice one, a 20 pounder. And sure enough, in the net it went, lovely times, lovely 20 pound mirror, not one I've seen before, I may have caught him in the past, really chunky like a football but we lifted him out and oh yeah, definitely it's a 20 pounder. So we put him in the net, got the rod rigged up again, walked back down with Rich, had another little look and I saw a couple there, a big long brown one. And then as we're, I'm pointing that out to Rich, one rolled over the, over the right hand rod. Anyway, I put the rod back in, he came back and sat down. Anyway, 10, 15 minutes after that, tiniest little twitch on the right hand rod, which is often all you get here. You're fishing straight down to a, the end of the lead core and then Four, four, four or five foot to the rig and quite often you only get a few taps well anyway I had a couple of taps but then nothing so I run down to the rod and sort of sat there and as I sat there I had a little tiniest flicker I thought there's a lot of fry this year it could have been fry just pecking or hitting the line I wasn't sure and then the tip sort of slowly it was one on the end I picked it up it had already run back underneath me back up the channels around the concrete pillars and I uh, felt him you know he was on the end for a little bit and then bizarrely, a really rare event for the area, he cut me off and I lost him. Um, he boiled on the surface, big heavy boil under the bridge, under my feet, and he cut me off. I, for a second, I thought the hook had slipped out, which is a real rarity using those hooks. Like I'm using big, strong tackle. And when you get the bite and they pop the lead off, like it's very, very rare for him to fall off. Um, and it wasn't until I like, lifted the line out of the water, I could see he'd cut me off halfway up the lead core. So we were really unlucky, two bites in really short time. But anyway, I've put them back out again. Since I've put them out, the fish have pushed out the other side of the cabbages. We've seen a couple more roll. You know, you've got to remember they're flighty. They're, they're, they're fished for here now. Um, it never used to be in my formative years, but these days, like I've fished here a lot. I've written a few articles, shown a few pictures. You know, the, the spot gets fished now and the fish are very, very wary. Um, so we've had two bites in very short order. Um, and all I can say is we've put them back out there as quietly as we can, considering the disturbance, and hopefully we can get another one. Right, well I said I'd run you through the rig, I'm, I'm a bit distracted, I keep looking up to the rods all the time, <laughs> expecting another take. Um, we've seen a lot of fish this morning here, which is really unusual to be fair, you know, they keep rolling, they keep rolling in the cabbages, we've seen them rolling further down the canal. Um, I'm hoping, just I've seen another one then, just I spoke to you. Um, so I'm hopeful, hopeful, that we get another chance. Obviously losing that one with a cut off wasn't ideal. Um, you know, they're like a little family when they live here, these fish. So, you know, when you spook one, you invariably spook all of them. Um, but there's been some bubbling in the cabbages. I've been feeding in into the flow this side, some dusted boilies, trying to, you know, put a little bit of scent, more scent through the cabbages to try and um, make something happen, basically, try and entice them back out. Um, because make no mistake, we'll show you shortly, but there's an awful lot of cover here and it's deep. Um, and it's perfect for carp to hide in. But anyway, rig-wise, because, because it's so, the cabbages are so dense and so deep this year, 
I'm having to base my approach purely on simplicity itself and strength, more importantly. So what I'm using is I've got six foot of lead core down to a ring swivel to which I tie the lead on using light line, literally a simple overhand granny knot. Um, I haven't got a cast at all, I'm lowering in, so like literally as soon as this clips a, a root or some cabbage, this breaks away, this lead. Uh, it's a six foot of lead core, a ring swivel with a lead tie to it. I can use quite a big lead, that's a three and a half ounce. A short hook link, I'm using called a soft end trap, which is incredibly strong, very durable. Um, I've never had it let me down. You can knot it simply, you haven't got to do any fancy knots with it. It's, it's pretty foolproof to be fair. Um, a, short, a short link, probably four or five inches. A size six wide gape hook, which is nice and strong. Uh, tied straight through. And a boilie and a half on the hair. Um, there's a little bit of flow there. I don't tend to use pop-ups or anything like that here, just because every now and again you get a push from the sewage works and the flow increases and, and, a, and a smaller hook bait would be moving around on the bottom. Um, so I always try and use a boilie and a half, gives it a little bit more weight, ensures it sits on the bottom nice and tight. Um, but in a nutshell, that's it. It couldn't get any simpler and it is just about strength more than anything else. Um, unfortunately, you can't account for the odd loss. The cutoff that I had, the fish had run back up the channel. We saw a couple of little plucks on the line but because I'm fishing literally straight to the end of the lead core, five foot to the, to the rig, it had picked it up and run back under the cover of darkness under the bridge. Um, and the stanchions this year are covered in little tiny mussels, zebras, and it cut the lead core, which is really unfortunate and very rare for here, if I'm honest. Uh, but there you go in a nutshell, really, really simple. As with all this sort of fishing, it's all about finding the carp. And when you find a carp in a little area like this, as long as your approach is simple, and quiet, invariably you can get a couple of bites, which is exactly what's happened. Well, it's getting on now. We're getting to about nine in the morning. Um, always on these sort of spots on the canal. Usually your bites come very quickly after you put, put your rods in, like, you know. Like I said earlier, I always make the effort to get anywhere where I'm doing these short sessions in, you know, I get here in the dark. Um, invariably, the fish are quite flighty, as I've said. Um, we've had two takes very quickly. Um, and what's happened now is the fish have pushed out of this bed of cabbages and they're rolling on the far side of the canal and further down in the deeper water. Um, they're scared, like, you know, like I said, they're like a little family. You, you hook one, you scare all of them. And that's pretty much always the case, summer or winter here. You know, you never expect to get many bites. It's usually one, maybe two if you're lucky. Um, but it just goes to prove that you don't need to spend tons and tons of time outside fishing uh, to catch some nice carp. You know, if you do your own work and have a little look around, find a nice spot, trickle a bit of bait and you haven't got to spend, you haven't got to invest a lot of money in time and bait is what I'm trying to get at. Um, and this is as real as it gets. This is proper, proper carp fishing. Um, away from everyone else, just me, a couple of hours in the morning and uh, like I said it's getting on nearly nine o'clock now, the canal's got busier, there's been a few boats go through, people coming through on bikes going to work and what have you, um, so it's pretty much time to call it a day. Uh, but you can see now the sort of spot I'm fishing, I'm literally, I wouldn't be stood here while I'm fishing, that's one of the biggest points is like the rods go in and I sit way back. Um, because they can see you, it's clear here, they can see you. When I got here, even in the half light, I could see fish over the top of the cabbages. Um, but anyway, we've had a couple of bites, a nice 20 pounder, and lost another one, unfortunately, it's probably another 20 pounder. Um, but it's been a really exciting morning, I've really enjoyed it, like I always do. Um, and as you can see, the rods are laid on the floor. A nice little trick is, I do like to have the buzzers on. Um, I've mounted these with little cork balls, so that if I get a take, I know it. You know, if I'm not looking, I know about it. Um, so all that remains for me to do really is I'm going to put a little bit of bait in, um, and then leave and be, and probably come back start next week on a Monday morning or something and have another couple of hours. <laughs> 